Hey everybody, I'm Matt Ruddick and today we're going to talk about FPV systems. Now, drones are popularly flown as FPV aircraft, and FPV stands for first person view, which just means that the pilot can experience flight from the aircraft's point of view. Now, flying FPV requires an FPV system. For a basic system, the first element you're going to need is a camera. Now, there are a few things you'll want to consider when choosing a camera. You'll want to consider dynamic range, latency, and field of view. Let's talk about dynamic range. That refers to the amount of shadow and highlights that you can see together in a, in a single image. Wide dynamic range is extremely important because the camera needs to handle large differences in brightness throughout a flight. If you're unable to see past blinding light of the sun, there's a good chance you might miss your next gate or just crash altogether. Now latency is how long it takes for a single frame of video to go from your camera over to your goggles. Now imagine seeing a video a fraction of a second after the video is captured. That means your reaction on the sticks will be behind by that same amount. Now, trying to avoid a tree, if you have too much latency, you could change direction, but in reality, you've already crashed. Now the latency needs to be minimal to have a good FPV experience. And that's why we still fly with these relatively low resolution cameras, as they provide much less latency than an HD camera. And remember, the faster the FPV aircraft, the more important that low latency can be. Finally, the lens field of view determines how much of the world the camera can see. A good field of view will provide great spatial awareness without being disorienting or distorting the image. Now, there are two types of cameras. Early FPV systems used cameras built around charge-coupled device sensors, or CCD sensors, because of their low cost, their durability, and their latency. CCD-based cameras offer good quality picture with fast adaptation to light changes. A newer complementary metal oxide semiconductor, or CMOS-based cameras, are quickly becoming popular because of advancements that offer even lower latency, better dynamic range, and a generally better higher resolution image. For many pilots, these choices are very subjective, so take a look at each technology and decide what works best for you. Once you've selected a camera, the next element is the video transmitter. The video transmitter receives the video signal from the camera and converts it to wireless signals that can be received by the pilot. When making your decision, you might consider power levels or the use of certain frequencies. There might be regulations in your area as well, so make sure to check your local laws. Transmitter power measured in milliwatts is usually the most notable specification of any video transmitter but more power isn't necessarily better. Now, most FPV transmitters range between 25 and 800 milliwatts. They're also available in several different frequency ranges such as 900 megahertz, 1.2 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and 5.8 gigahertz. Now 5.8 gigahertz is by far the most practical for small aircraft because of the small size of the required antennas and the relatively low saturation or usage of the 5.8 gigahertz band. Now, if you plan to race and organize races, be sure to make sure that the VTX you choose supports the frequencies that are required, such as race band. Now, once you have your camera and video transmitter, the third element is the video receiver. The video receiver picks up the wireless signals sent out by a video transmitter and converts them back into a video signal, which is then sent to the display or FPV goggles. Some FPV goggles and head-mounted displays might have a built-in receiver. Now, receivers range from simple eight-channel receivers to more complex diversity systems that use multiple receivers and automatically use the one with the highest signal quality. Some of these even offer extended functionality, such as favorite channel selection, basic spectrum analyzers, and a lost model finder, and more. And there are also specialty dual receivers that reconstruct the video signal to minimize interference and break up. These are still new to the market, but they are offering promising results. Now, the last element in the FPV system is the display. The display takes the signal from the receiver and converts it back into an image. Now, there are a variety of options available, such as monitors, head-mounted displays, or FPV goggles. Now, my favorite option is an FPV goggle, although they're usually the most expensive. They are more compact and sit closer to your face, so they're generally more comfortable than head-mounted displays. And they also block out the external visual distractions that you might have using a monitor. 
Now, some versions of FPV goggles offer more additional features that can be worth the higher price tag, such as a DVR recording and the ability to plug in an external video feed for ground stations. So with your camera, your video transmitter, your video receiver, and your FPV goggles, you have a complete FPV system. Now be sure to check out Drone Pilot, a special issue of Model Aviation Magazine. There's a link in the description below to get your copy to learn more about selecting antennas for your system and other optional accessories.